and going through the transformation that's found in nature that you're trying to use, which is alchemy, which is earth, water, air, and fire. What's different, what's changing, what's reversing, and what's inverting. This must be experienced by us inside a form so that when we're in it, the form is transforming us and we'll be able to transform ourselves at the same time in a way that we can now leave the building, which will not really have any walls, we we'll able to leave the building, okay, not through the doors, but through the form. Okay. <laughs> So I hope do you have any questions. Yes, yes, yes. Have you set the dual that Chuck's been doing in motion? Have I tested the dual? Have you have you uh, set the dual of the Chuck's been doing in motion? Uh, uh, so what you're referring to is this guy. No, no, no the, the dual dual this oil is inside your ear. Have I? Turn this spin. into spin. 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 to spin it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you would think I would, but I think I'd have a yes answer, but I don't. I have done the middle one. Okay, this is really new. This is about a two weeks. Oh, wow. Wow. It's really new, and uh, it's a. Uh, it, it's it's it's. This little guy, when I, uh, he looks to me like when I put him down on the carpet, he looks like he's just jumping around the carpet. He's so happy. This is a very happy form. <laughs> it really is. It's a very, very happy form. But no, I can spin it and find out. You know, it kind of reminds me of almost like an artichoke, you know? And I always yeah. use the joke, you know, even artichokes have hearts. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yes? So what occurred to me was that the inverse bell, the grass bell from yes. Tim Saunders. Yeah, that's that's a reversal. Yeah, that reversal. Yeah. I say sometimes I get a ringing in my ear, and that's the ring. That's the what? That's the ring. The sound. Uh -huh. It's not the bell, but it finishes. There's something in the structure of the ear that reverberates in the same way. So you're saying that noise is is coming out of your ear, isn't it? It's not going in. <laughs> I guess. Same quality. An inner ear. Can I build on that? Sure. <laughs> well, she was saying that the, the ringing that she heard is what, what she hears inside ringing. With tinnitus, you know, you get a ringing in your ears, it's that same sound. So it's this with respect to the healing that you were describing with your form? The healing? The healing. Yes. I have a hearing loss in my right ear. Yeah. When he did that. You could hear? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying I didn't have any hearing. I'm saying that this hearing in this ear is dampened compared to this ear. And when he rung this bell, I didn't hear any sound in my good ear. I only heard it in the ear wow. that has a hearing. Yeah, all of you hearing that? Now, that's she, the truth. She it's impaired in one side, can't hear very good, but hears good here. And rings a bell, can't hear good here, but can't hear good here. That's exactly right. That's a reversal. And that's exactly right. I, that was my experience. And I said, wow, that's, I isn't a reversal. changing my ear. <laughs> See, the bell, the bell is a lawful reversal. It's not fantasy. It's not coming out of, oh, I like it. This is cool. And I'm gonna, no, I didn't do that. I reversed it. Reverse. Lawfully, I reversed it. And that's what we have to do. All of our work has to be now lawful. Okay, And that's why art has to move in this direction. Because I have made, like those things up there, you know, those are all lawful, but they're artistic. They're not just geometry and mathematics. This is art has entered in here. And what is that? The art, and according to Rudolf Steiner, is the spiritual. That's why he calls it spiritual uh, science. Science and the spirit connected. Connected. One. Heaven, earth, architecture, squaring the circle. It's all what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, this is this is this great stuff. With your model for the 9-11 memorial building, were you able to enter into some kind of conversation with them about it? Did they talk to you? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. That like? uh, I, I, I entered, but I didn't win, of course. You know that. <laughs> but I entered because I felt that was something I could do.
entered, but I didn't win, of course, you know that. But I entered because I felt that was well, something I could do, you know? What can an artist do, you know, if something happens like that? Well, that's what I thought I could do. So I entered it, and there were over 5,000 other entries. And uh, they don't, they don't, they, the only thing they tell, told me was who won. <laughs> it wasn't me, you know? And what won was this hole in the ground, kind of, with, with water running into the hole. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, nothing really happened. I, I, oh, by the way, if you go on, online and you go World Trade Center, WTC, uh, competition, Frank Chester, it comes up. Okay. The whole thing, and you have, to, you have to move it across like this because it's sections. So you can find it. It's on the internet. But I didn't put it on there. They did. Because nature is waiting, or whoever it is, is waiting for us to do what they can't do. And they can't do that. They're depending on us. They're depending on us to take and it, they can't do this as virtual world. This can't be done. Virtual world isn't three dimensional. We can only do this here. That's why when we're born, we reach for the little things on the cribs and we can't reach them, right? We can't get them. We don't know how far away they are. That's because we're coming out of the second dimension. Okay, so the third dimension is where we can work and give the spiritual world what they can't do. Now, nature isn't about being perfect. Nature has, has brought down to us a process. That's what it's all about, it's process. Because nature never stays the same. It's always changing. It's reversing. It's turning inside out. If you, this is where Goethe got all of his work from plants. He studied plants, 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 plants. Nature, 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 nature. And what he found out, it was transforming in a lawful way. And if we take that, not a belief system, but if we take the science of tra transformation, which you're starting to see here, and we apply it to all kinds of different things that we have in our life that we can do, okay, that's what it's all about. It's transformation, what nature shows us that we can do, because this is what nature does. And nature's waiting for us to take it on, on ourselves, to do something beyond what they left. They left all this stuff around us, all these plants, all these trees, with the idea that, hey, come on, look what we did. What are you going to do? Can you do something? This is our process. Study us, see how we change and metamorph, and learn from us so that you can do something new, different based on nature, but not copying. Rilla Steiner kept saying, don't copy nature. Don't copy it. Find its process. Find it how it moves, how it changes. Because you can't copy it any better than we've done it, but you can make something new. But you can't copy it. No painting. I've never seen a painting anywhere near. It comes like an apple. You can't, you can't paint an apple. That's perfect already in nature. But we can improve on the way it moves, the way it changes, what it does, what it doesn't do. And that we can do that through a lawful movement through geometry. We can also do this a lawful way of using transformation in poetry, in painting, in storytelling, and teaching. I mean, students want to know this. This is why a lot of people want me to, to come, is because I can they can be taught this way. Not say, okay, everybody's gonna copy an apple today. Mm -mm. It's not about that. It's about teaching children how to transform nature into more perfectness. Now, I'll give you one example that I, can, I know. I went to a guy named John Wilkes. He developed all these flow forms. Okay, and these flow forms go in a lemniscape and they come down like this and they refresh the water at the end of the waterfall. And he says, I wanna show you this, this spiral. And so he brought the spiral out and it went like this, out of plastic. And I says, well, where did you get that? He says, it came, it came from nature but I improved it. And now the flow forms flow much better than they would in nature because I improved this spiral. So it's taking nature and improving it. Not, not trying to be better than nature, not trying to be that you think you're as good as nature. It's not that. It's to learn from nature. Okay. Mathematics, okay, measures, right? Geometry doesn't do that. So mathematics doesn't really fit into geometry because geometry gets things that can't be measured, okay? 
So no matter what kind of system you use of mathematics, it won't work. So I'll show you something on the, the, the board that's amazing. This is what I want you to do in the workshop. If you take, this might help you. If you take a cube, I'm running out of space here. I'll use this one. This is perfect. Regular cube, that's root 2. From here to here is root 2. You put your compass point here and you swing an arc. Follow me? Mm -hmm. And you do it over here and you swing an arc like this. You draw a line right here. That is a root 2 rectangle. Perfect. Now here comes root 3. Root 3, perfect. I don't measure anything, it's perfect. Next one. I go to here. Swing an arc. It is two cubes, perfect. Hmm. <laughs> I take another one from here to here. And from here to here. And I go on, 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 on. I can go root 1,463. <laughs> can you believe it? It just goes on and on and on, perfect. All through geometry. That's amazing that happens. I know, if you take the geometry class, I'll show you exactly how this works and how you can make art out of it. You can make these beautiful spirals. The kids just love this kind of work, I'm telling you. It would be neat if a new number system would be developed so this could be measured. What are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> really, I, this, what, uh, the half of half of what's going on here is to encourage you to take up something that you would like to do and go with it. Because I started all this ten years ago with seven sticks and a piece of mud. That's how all this started. And I always tell everybody that when I was in high school, I failed one course, and that was geometry. <laughs> And that's because I could draw better with, with the freehand than the instruments that made the guy mad. And he <laughs> came up to me, I was drawing cartoons of him. <laughs> and he came up to me, he says, he said to me, I said, I'm in ninth, eighth grade, ninth grade. Comes up to me, he says, you know, every year I have to fail somebody and I'm failing you. <laughs> I go, wow, what did I do, you know? I thought the cartoon was pretty good. You know? 